Okay everyone, new video. So this video is the 12 tools that I use in work and life and some in between to create momentum in life. I've been thinking a lot about how I want to build momentum. I want to build a sense of acceleration in life. I don't want to control life, but I want to use tools um, that are available to me to build a sense of momentum. So these are 12 tools that I use on a daily basis. Some of them I've used for over a decade. Some of them um, I've only just kind of come across and I'm exploring. So combination of both, um, but I'll share, these are the things I like about them. These are the things I'm not so sure about them, but this is how I use them to build momentum in life. So let's dive straight in. So these are gonna be my life apps. I'm gonna start with my life tools. So let's start with Obsidian. So Obsidian is my note-taking app. It's where I document everything. And I absolutely love Obsidian. I've become kind of obsessed with it. Um, I absolutely love the graph view. If you've ever seen the graph view, you'll know what I mean. You can animate it as well. It's super cool. Um, but I love it because it's really simple and it has security at mine as well. So you store all of your notes on your local kind of laptop or in the cloud, on iCloud, but you have kind of control over where those are stored. And um, it means that you can kind of take them and move them and do with them whatever you want. So I really like that about it. You're not locked into some kind of proprietary system. And um, I absolutely love the canvas view. So the ability to kind of dot different notes, make connections, put different cards, group things. Um, love it, absolutely love it. So for me, it's not just a note-taking tool. It's a way for tracking and a way for keeping track of my journey and my history and the things that I've discovered along the way. So um, absolutely love Obsidian. It's a bit of a learning curve. That's the thing that I think is probably the downside to it. If you're not techie or you're not in tech, it's a bit intimidating. But once you get over that hurdle, then it's great. So if you know you're interested in some quick tutorials or ways to actually get started on Obsidian, let me know in the comments because I'd be very happy to you know, do some of those to show you how I've actually made it work for me. So second in the life category is Paprika. It's basically a cooking app <laughs> and it's a way to document or store all your recipes in one place. So when my wife and I got married, we both weren't that great at cooking and had this kind of sense of intimidation of if we couldn't just throw things in a pan, then we didn't know how to cook. Um, but actually what we found was that when we found good recipes that we really liked, we actually were able to create nice meals. So we found this super helpful to be able to pull together all our recipes together. And then what's really nice, I really like, is the ability to then um, meal plan in there as well so you can then pull those recipes into a calendar view and then you can then take that week that you've got and then add all the groceries from those recipes into a grocery list so really really useful uh, we've found it well i mean this is one that we've used for almost 10 years uh, another one in the life category would be ynab so YNAB stands for You Need a Budget. So this is all finance related. This is another one that I've used for um, almost 10 years now. Um, and I used to get really stressed looking at my bank account. It used to like really stress me out or the thought of what was in it rather than actually what was in it or the thought I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't know where my money was or how I was using it. So YNAB, um, there's loads of tools like this, but this one's really stuck for me and for my family, um, is a tool to basically, you connect all your bank accounts and then you can keep track of your expenditure. But what I really like about it is the ability to adapt during the month. So you set your kind of budget for the beginning of the month, but then as you go through the month, you might be like, well, actually I wanna buy this. And you then move money from certain categories into other categories to make it possible for you to make that purchase but the reality is you're you know you're you're moving money from some other category that means you won't be able to buy something in that category because you bought something in the other category so it's a really helpful tool because it means you're actually thinking about okay if i make this purchase i have to make the choice not to make this other purchase potentially in the future so you really think about the choices that you're making so i found it really really useful it does have a bit of a cost 
um, but really helps kind of turn what was quite a weak area for me in terms of finance management into a strength because I can see where I'm spending money and I can track it over time. Really, really useful. Love it. Um, and then the final one in the life category would be an app called Gentler Streak. And this is a fitness app. I've used this probably for about 12, almost coming on 12 months now. And I really like it because it doesn't do what a lot of fitness apps do, which is, you know, you, you try and maintain your streak over a consistent period of time. So, you know, you're trying to keep the same goal every time, every day. So a bit like, you know, Apple Fitness, where you have to reach a certain goal and you close your rings right every day. And if you don't close your rings, you've lost your streak or whatever. This takes a different approach. It takes approach where you're actually looking to maintain fitness and increase fitness over time, um, which may include some rest days and may include some times where you're not feeling that great and might be days where you push further um, than you maybe should have done and you need to rest a little bit. And they have this activity path, they call it, which shows you how you're progressing. And, and as long as you're in this kind of band, then you're doing OK. And I really like that approach because it allows me to overall be aiming for better health and fitness rather than um, try and meet a strict goal for every single day that I just find impossible with two young kids and life going on. So <laughs> That's gentler streak, really like it. And um, again, it comes with a bit of cost, but I think it's de definitely worth it. And I really like the Apple Watch integration with that. Okay, moving on to section two. So this would be the kind of in-between um, tools. So between life and work. So first one would be ChatGPT. If someone tells you they're not using ChatGPT, then either they don't know how to use it effectively or they're lying. I think everyone who knows how to use it or has come across it finds it very, very useful. I think everyone says this right, it's not a replacement to actually doing the work, but it really helps me. I find it very helpful with um, getting a start on something or refining something or just getting different ideas out. Really useful tool. Okay, second one in this kind of area in between would be Tick Tick. So this is a task management app. Now, I've been through so many of these and I feel like I still haven't found the one that is like doing everything I want it to do. But at the moment, Tick Tick kind of works for me. Um, it's It does everything that a standard task management app would do. Um, I like its simplicity. I like that you've got natural language processing in how you create the tasks. I like the Apple Watch integration. Again, I'm an Apple Watch person. Um, so I think I like that, the ability to kind of quickly create tasks um, and get things out of my brain into something is really, really helpful. I like the fact that it has integrations with other things. So one of the, the, the other tools that I'm going to talk about is Spark, which is an email tool, and that integrates with TickTick. -Tick. But if you have other task management apps that you think work really well, then do let me know because I'm always um, open to trying something new and my wife always laughs at me because I'm constantly moving from one to the next and setting up and trying it out. I really enjoy it. So, but tick, tick, that's what I'm in at the moment. Okay, the third one in this category of in-between is the Arc Browser. Um, and if you haven't heard of this, I'd really encourage you to go and have a look at it. Have a look at all of these, but I really love this one. This one's really kind of felt like it's shifted my use of the internet in a lot of ways. I mean, it, just visually, the movement from of a toolbar in a browser being at the top to being on the side is like like mind blown. It's like really interesting how it makes you use the tool very differently. But I love Arc. I love the ability to have different spaces, um, which means that you can have different tabs um, open in different areas and logged into different accounts. I uh, like how it keeps everything clean and how it integrates with the mobile app. The Arc Browse for Me feature in the mobile app is so cool, really like it. And the pinch to summarize, if you've if you've used that, oh, so good, so good. Okay, and then the last one in this category of kind of in-between is Spark email. I mentioned that just now, I was talking about TickTick. -tick. But email for me has always been challenging. Like I don't like any of these tools. They all feel very similar, but Spark has been really nice. And I tried the free trial of the premium model. And I love the kind of home screen where it helps you kind of 
keep a distance from emails. It almost puts a kind of buffer between you and your emails and you can kind of um, negotiate how you want to engage with it, which I kind of like. I really like that. I've never been an inbox zero kind of person. I've always kind of archived things or just, you know, use search if I need to. But I still feel like I miss things or I'm, I'm, I'm worried that I'm going to miss things. So Spark, I feel like it's really works. It unifies all your inboxes and it kind of categorizes. I know Google does this in their Gmail app, but this does it for all your inboxes. It puts things into newsletters, notifications, actual people. So it helps you to kind of focus on the emails that are actually important and then to go in and look at the other ones when you want to. So like that, it helps me not get overwhelmed by emails, which sometimes when you're getting all this kind of clutter coming in all the time can get a bit overwhelming. Okay, moving on to work apps. So uh, four apps, four, four apps in the work category. So just to review though quickly before we do that. So um, in terms of life ones, there was Obsidian, Paprika, YNAB, Gentler Streak, and then the ones in between were ChatGPT, TickTick, Arc Browser, and Spark Email. So going into work, so um, first one would be Hostinger, which might surprise some people. I've been creating a portfolio recently for work. I'm job hunting, which you'll see from other tools that I'm using. And um, Hostinger is actually a really cheap way of creating a website really quickly that is kind of a step away from one of those one-page websites, which are really um, cheap to a kind of fully fledged like Squarespace or um, that kind of tool, which actually ends up being quite expensive. So hosting a, you can you can use WordPress kind of templates, but I've just built it from scratch. But I really like it. It's actually really easy to use. Um, it has some limitations, but it has responsive design, so you can do mobile and desktop, um, which I think is really important, um, and is really user-friendly in terms of the design, visual design, drop and drag, all that kind of stuff. So I found it really good. I have a blog running. I can put all my case studies in there and I can create some nice pages. So I actually found it really good and it's really, really affordable. So definitely one to look into if you're in the market for creating a case study or portfolio site or you're a small business or that kind of thing. Very affordable um, and works for me. So that's hosting app. The next one would be Screen Studio. Um, and I've shared this online before, but I absolutely love Screen Studio. I think they've increased their prices recently, unfortunately. But this basically is a tool to record your screen. Um, and if you've seen any of my videos, you'll see I use it quite a lot. But rather than just you know recording the screen and it's static and it's not very engaging, it zooms in when you click on things um, and moves around the screen as you move your cursor around. You can change the size of the cursor. You can change the zoom, how much it zooms, all that kind of stuff. So it actually creates a really engaging screen recording. And um, I've actually used it in a previous job for just, um, you know, videos to my team where I just shared an idea that I was working on a it was probably a product idea, some UI or some UX, and um, just helped with actually sharing the idea in an engaging way and helped them see the details because I think screen recordings can be quite static and a bit boring. So really helped with that. So um, Screen Studio, I think, is a great tool if you can afford it. And then uh, number three in this category would be Hunter. I don't know how to, pr how to pronounce this really. It's H-U-N-T-R. I am job hunting at the moment, as I've said. So this is a tool for keeping track of your job applications. And it uses a very kind of familiar format of a Kanban board. And you can change the different statuses that you want to move things through. But it has a um, integration or a plugin or whatever you call them, a Chrome plugin, um, so that you can be on LinkedIn or be on any site and you see a job ad that you really like and you can save it into Hunter or add it into your board. And then you can basically move it through the stages of the application process. And also then you can add documents to it so you can customize your resume and it uses AI to um, look at your resume, your base kind of resume, and then adapt it and help you adapt it so that it meets keywords and all that kind of stuff for that particular job. And then it can, again, it will use AI to generate cover letters for you, um, questions that you might want to ask in the interview, 
a load of things related to job applications. So I'm finding it very useful at the moment because that's what I'm doing. It's fairly steep on price, but most of the, you know, if you're, if you're applying for jobs, it's kind of a one-off thing. You're hoping not to do it too often, right? So um, my, my perspective on it is pay to make it easier. I really like that you can just keep track of things. So as you're working through different job applications, you're not kind of trying to remember, oh, what have I applied for? And what stage am I at? And when's the interview? And who is the key contact? And where's all my documents? This helps you to keep track of all those things. And then finally in this um, category is workflow. And I have actually created a quick first look video that I can link up here of this. I really like it. It's for creatives and for kind of client interactions, but could also just be a creative, you know, management, productivity management tool for a creative, a small creative agency or a freelancer or anyone, basically. Um, I really like it because it brings in some very simple productivity kind of task management visuals and interface um, with also the client interface. So the ability to get feedback and granular comments from clients into the place that you're working. So that's what I really like. And the fact that you can do a variety of different media types. So you can do video, photography, uh, websites, Figma designs, um, whatever really. And you can share that with clients and get very granular feedback on the media itself. So really helpful. Um, it's something I've you know just come across, so I'm exploring it, but I'm in there trying it out, using it every day. So that's why it kind of fits into this into this video. And that's it. Those are my 12 daily tools um, that I'm in every day. And all of these, as I said at the start, are helping me to build momentum in life, helping me to remove distractions, helping me to accelerate forward. So what do you think? Are these tools that you've used before? Have you used other ones? Do you have alternatives that you can share with me? As I said, I'm always interested in finding new tools to explore. So drop me a comment and um, please like, subscribe and share this video if you found it interesting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.